Hi. I have all three of my books with me, so we have all of the text we need just in case. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. So to recap for everybody, we just finished Titan's Curse. And one of the things that's been kind of on our mind, especially because of like the Luke scenes towards the end of Titan Curse, I think, is what like whether Luke at all deserves any sort of grace for being groomed. Like, and that seems to be a constant thing that's brought up in the fandom. When I was looking this up on Reddit, it seems like every once in a while, someone's like, Luke is a completely irredeemable villain. And we happen to agree with that stance. We'll tell you guys why. But you know, the one thing that we have to say right away is that Rick Riordan wrote this character so well, that people are able to have this discussion and are able to be like, well, his story is extremely tragic and I empathize with him or I can't empathize with anything he did despite the tragedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's he did a really good job of writing a character like him because this is how people actually talk about mm -hmm. people like this in real life. <laughs> so it's very accurate, but it also is one of those things of sometimes I feel like people go too far and it's like i don't know if you understand completely what he was trying to do um because i think it's gone a little bit too far one way or the other sometimes yeah i mean we can look at any like really disgusting despicable person in history and find things to be like this is a reason to pity them a little bit mm -hmm. but that doesn't excuse a lot of the things they do and to remind everybody up to the point of titan's curse what we know is that he is letting chronos take over his body that he has orchestrated poisoning talia's tree tried to kill percy let's see there was the shoes the scorpion um there was you know like the sea of monsters the entire book essentially um titan's curse was also you know like he has gone on after a younger kid that is his mirror. I will admit that when people in the fandom talk about it, there is a lot of similarities between the two. But I think that that's why we're supposed to look at Luke a lot differently than some people do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting how people are like, oh, they're mirrors of each other, but they only say that in the way to give Luke excuses. Um, but yeah. they don't do it the other way to be like, oh, Luke could have just chosen not to do any of this stuff at all. That's yeah. also a, a possibility because Percy didn't. He didn't do any of this stuff. And so it's like if they're mirrors, he could have said no every yeah. single time. But he didn't. And that's the entire point of this story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I wanted to start us off with the villain monologue from the lightning thief because that's the first moment where we know you know like mm -hmm. up until then being in percy's head he didn't even know he willingly walks off with luke into the woods um despite the fact that the part of the prophecy of the first book that said a friend is going to betray you hasn't happened yet and so um you know there's there's no red flags in his mind other than like luke's been a little distant since i came home and maybe it's because i came home successful from my quest and he did not mm -hmm. yeah so let's see the luke um monologue starts with um okay so he lures him into the woods with coke with a six pack of coke which sorry i want to i want to back up to the like how he lures him lures him in because there's a couple red flags that i think percy kind of glossed over at first so he notices backbiter first he, he runs into luke while luke is practicing on all the dummies that are there and he's like oh that must be a real sword because it's cutting through the dummies and um then uh, he asks him about it. And he's like, oh, this is a new toy. This is Backbiter. One side is Celestial Bronze. The other is Tempered Steel. Works on mortals and immortals both. And then Percy's like, wait a second. I thought Chiron had told me before we went on this quest that we shouldn't take out mortals unless we have to, like unless it's very, very necessary. Um, and so there, there should be a red flag right away of like, 
why does he have this? Why is this necessary? Yeah, why would it ever be necessary to kill normal people who aren't involved in what you're doing, have no idea what you're doing? There's no reason to do that besides the fact you just want to kill people. Exactly. And then the way that he lures him in, as I said, was with Coke. But what Percy remarks in his head is like, how did he get those? Because either he would have had to leave camp or he would have had to bribe a satyr to come and like bring them to him. So like, why does he have those? Mm -hmm. And it feels like a very pointed choice when you have neurodivergent people in your life and you know that have if they've been drinking, you know, like poofed soda out of goblets that doesn't taste the same, the real thing is really going to entice them. <laughs> it, it also just feels like really messed up of like, hey, I'm your friend. Like come out here in the woods alone by my by yourself while I'm gonna like bribe you with your favorite food that you told me about because I've made you think that I'm your friend. It's just yeah and i mean the way luke is acting here because cutting up the dummies he kind of excuses it with like oh we rebuild them every summer anyways and so it's no big deal that i'm like destroying this part of our training spot and then with the um the coke he just throws the can out into the creek and percy's like rule number one is you don't litter in camp like and especially because you consider how many children there are probably like nature's God's children, you know, like there's probably so many nature spirits around there. That's a big part of Greek mythology. He is being so disrespectful here and it's very subtle, but like when you know and you see it, you're just like, wait a second, this is really, really out of character. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing one of the Reddit posts you found made a really good point of okay. is that Luke obviously never thought that Percy was going to live mm -hmm. like, because of the way that he's acting, the way that he's showing him the sword that he's not supposed to have. He has food he's not supposed to have. He's showing him that how much he doesn't respect camp when he usually pretends like he does. Mm -hmm. Even after this fact, he tries to pretend like he does when he's like, grooming selena and things like that and so it's like he obviously just did not care because he was so sure that percy was gonna die yeah so the start of the villain monologue is um they were talking about being out there in the world after and then he summons the pit scorpion and um so luke says i saw a lot out there in the real in the world percy um didn't you feel it? The darkness gathering, the monsters growing stronger. Didn't you realize how useless it all is? All the heroics being pawns of the gods. They should have been overthrown thousands of years ago, but they've hung on thanks to us half-bloods. Um, and then Percy says, Luke, you're talking about our parents. And he says, that's supposed to make me love them? Their precious Western civilization is a disease, Percy. It's killing the world. The only way to stop it is to burn it to the ground, start over with something more honest. So let's stop there for a second. Um, because I feel like this is the part that I guess people think is relatable, but it's not relatable coming from him and it's not relatable in this circumstance. I mean, we're all kind of not happy with the way things are politically, like economically right now. And a lot of us feel, you know, like something's wrong with our system, you know, like, and there are a certain group of people that are like, let's, let's change the entire system. I won't say which side right yet, but like, there is <laughs> one side that's like, let's rebuild the system from the bottom up and fill it with all of our people. And then it's going to run better. Um, that's, that's not the best way to do this. And um, like, while this is the chain reaction that gets to a more desired result, it's all by the skin of Percy's teeth. Yeah, and it's also like, when I was, when you were reading that, I was trying not to laugh because mm -hmm. Luke is one of the most privileged kids in this world. And like, that doesn't take away from the things he experienced that was traumatizing, obviously. But it's just a fact that he is, like, 
his his god parent not only wants to talk to him but is literally like on his knees begging him to talk to him for most of his life and like and nobody else hardly anyone else ever gets any treatment like that ever even like poseidon is nicer to percy but he still is not really around at all he disappears for like entire years of his life and things like that and so like he when it comes to that's like a longer story really but it's just funny that luke of all people is the one that is like this world is rotten and everyone should die and it's like you were you you were claimed before you even got to camp you knew who your you knew your dad was hermes when you were a little kid like mm-hmm. you knew who you were you knew you had years knowing that you were a demigod before you ever even went to camp in the first place you didn't run away from home until you were 14 mm-hmm. and like you had a much easier time than most people do why are you the jaded little emo fuck shit like saying this shit and like acting like the world is rotten and everything is terrible and can you feel the darkness what are you talking about like you have had a much easier time than everyone else like imagine how hard like imagine how upset he would have been if this is how angry he is with his life currently Mm -hmm. if if like he lived like annabeth's life or like percy's life like what if your mom hit you and you were stuck at home with your mom hitting you? Or like, what if your mom gaslit you while somebody else hit you and then another person gaslit you and then another person gaslit you? Like, what if that was your life? Or like, what if you had to run away from home when you were in first grade because home was so dangerous at that age that you had no choice but to leave? Or like, Nico, like what if you had to go on the run when you were 10 years old because you felt like the one place you could go to wasn't safe? Like, all there's so many other stories or all the kids in the Hermes cabin that were not claimed for years. Like all of these people had a much harder life than he did. And he's out here being like the little edge ward. And it's like, what is wrong with you? Like, I, like, I know one of the things that happens with Luke too, to me is that that happens with real life abusers is that people exaggerate or like they find themselves exaggerating his life to make it worse than it actually was because they are trying to like overcompensate for the things that luke has done and um this is like i'm trying to figure out how to like say this sort of thing in a way that people will understand but there's this idea that if you're traumatized or something that one day you'll just like go over the edge and go over a cliff and some, and just like turn into like a killer or someone who just treats people badly or is okay with abusing people. And that's not how abuse works just to start off, but that's also not how trauma works. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. But like people think that that's what happens. And so they like try to take the things we know about Luke's life and make it like almost more like, one of the mirroring things that always bothers me is how they talk about his mom like they talk about his mom as if his mom was like not a good mom his mom was a great mom she ended up becoming like mentally ill because of a a thing that she didn't know would happen that hermes tried to get her not to do yeah he didn't tell her to do it he told her not to and she wanted to anyway because she wanted to like she thought it would help her kid and it obviously backfired but Like, she was still a good mom before that ever happened. And she was still trying to help him, even though she was mentally ill after this happened. And so it's like she was not this horrible, bad mother that was, like, abusive or treated him badly or anything like that. But people talk about him like that to, like, compare Sally. And it's like they were the same person. It's just that Sally, you know, didn't become mentally ill at some point when Percy was, like, eight. But yeah. that's the only difference. She was still a good mom, and she was there for many of his like formidable years that would, like you know, help you become like a good person. And so you can't put this on her. Yeah, don't put this on her. It's not her fault. She's not a bad parent. She's the one that had to pay the most out of everybody like when it really comes down to it, because after they fixed the Oracle, she probably woke up 
and found out that her son tried to kill the entire world over and used her as the scapegoat for it all. Mm -hmm. Like she woke up to her son being dead and like, and not only that, but destroying the entire, trying to destroy everyone and killing innocent children in order to do it. Mm -hmm. Like she's probably the worst person that he, how he treated her. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's so weird to hear people talk about him in this way because it just reminds me so much of everything that people have said to me through the years about about my dad and other people in my life that it's just it like freaks me out (laughs) yeah to hear the way that people describe him um because that like yeah i guess the the thing we were talking about with this is was luke um like groomed by chronos and this is like my general rule with this whole discussion you can bring that up but if you're bringing that up just to justify what he does i'm not going to listen to you yeah because the only you're not bringing it up because it's something to talk about you're bringing it up to make excuses for the villain in this story that's if that if that it's kind of it's like similar to like how people bring up only like male victims when they're trying to downplay female victims coming forward. If the only time you talk about male victims is that, then you should shut the fuck up. If the only time you're bringing up that Kronos was manipulative to like say that it's okay that, that Luke murdered everybody and that you should still like defend him and that Annabeth should have run away with him and things like that, then you should shut the fuck up. (laughs) just yeah. stop talking because you don't actually know what you're saying and it's better at this point to stop talking than to make it worse and keep going yeah um hold on i think the next part gets into chronos so let's continue with the villain monologue so after he says you know let's start over with something more honest percy says you're as crazy as aries which then he um it says his eyes flared Ares is a fool. He never realized the true master he was serving. If I had time, Percy, I could explain, but I'm afraid you won't live that long. And that's when he, the scorpion starts calling up Percy's leg. Um, and Percy draws the connection. You're serving Kronos. Um, he says, you should be careful with names. Uh, Kronos got you to steal the master bolt and the helm. He spoke to you in your dreams. And Luke's eyes start twitching. He spoke to you too, Percy. You should have listened. Um, so this is another mirroring thing that people forget because Percy is able to, like, he does have nightmares about Kronos, they do affect him, but he's able to not listen to them, you know, he's able to not give in to them, and there's, there's so much more danger for Percy than there is Luke, in a way, because... Percy is one of the prophecy kids. If he does fall victim to Kronos, like that's not good at all. And Luke, you know, he doesn't necessarily know that him falling victim to Kronos means his body's going to get taken over and all of the things that he's going to have to do, but um, he keeps doing them, you know? And, And that's part of the point is, Yes, like being groomed by Kronos was a factor here, but he had so much hatred bubbling up in his system that it's really using something that's already there. Mm -hmm. That's like the whole thing with Luke is that like Kronos likely was trying to get other people to join him. Mm -hmm. The reason why it was Luke wasn't because Kronos was just magically more manipulative when he talked to Luke or something. It was that Luke was already like his little emo rage filled self. And so he just like went with it because it already was angry like that. And it already was resentful of people and wanted to hurt people anyway. And so he was just, he was like, okay, like, I don't, I would rather do that than to get so I can get what I want. And so I don't care about other people. Other people would be like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Like, um, I was thinking about this when I was thinking about I was doing this last night about to try to explain like what abuse really is because I feel like people, especially because of true crime, <laughs> have like made it into this like crazy thing where some people believe that you're just born evil. That's not true. 
Um, some people think, I don't know, they just think that if something like snap snaps in your head and you, and you suddenly turn into like a maniacal villain that doesn't care about anybody or anything or something, I don't, anyway, but like really what abuse really is, is that you want, you want what you want and you're willing to do whatever you can do to get it. And it doesn't start with like, it's not like you suddenly just start doing like the biggest things to hurt people. And it's like the way that I like imagine in my mind, just from like experiences that I've had with in my own life is like, like when I was a kid, I thought until like two years ago that I didn't like pickles Mm -hmm. because my sister, when we would go out to eat, would tell me that I didn't like them so that she could eat mine. And so she just wanted to eat mine. (laughs) Yeah, and I legitimately believed until two years ago that I didn't like them until I bought them and tried them again and realized that I actually like them. And so that's like a very low stakes thing or like another stereotypical thing is like you see somebody wearing like a shirt or something you like, but you want it instead. So you tell the person they look bad in it or something like that so that they won't take it. And so you can take it. That's like very low stakes sort of stuff but that's like where that stuff can sometimes start if you if no one ever points out to you that like you know you're hurting somebody on purpose just to get what you want or like you know manipulating somebody to get what you want um but that is like where that stuff kind of starts and so you can look at like the things like with luke with him and like thalia and everything like that when they were out on the run we haven't gotten to like the last olympian that book is gonna oh my going to need like therapy when we're reading that book because of how many people die in it. But um, somewhere in that book, Thalia tells Percy like, yeah, Luke was the problem. She's mm-hmm. like, I can, I can admit it now that Luke was the problem and we we're on the road. Luke is why I ended up having to sacrifice myself because he started fights with like everyone that we ran into. And so I ended up having to do that because there were so many people coming after us. And um, like that's that sort of thing happening with Luke where like, he is, gets angry about what happened to his mom. He blames his dad because it's, I mean, it is Hermes. Like Hermes is never going to be around as much as he would want him to be. Um, mm-hmm. But still, like he blames Hermes for what happened to his mom, even though he told his mom not to do it. And but more importantly, the thing that <laughs> it, the thing with Luke that always like kind of shows how he really feels is like the things that actually make him the most angry and so like the thing that made him the most angry with hermes this is like something that i do remember when i read these books the first few times is that like he was most angry because he was asking hermes like if he knew his fate Mm -hmm. like what he would end up being like if people would know him if he would be like have a lot of chaos things like that yeah and hermes knew but wouldn't tell him and that's what made him so mad at his dad is that he knew but he wouldn't tell him and that's like something that that he brings up to percy at some point of oh your dad knows what's going to happen to you one day and he won't tell you and percy's like i don't care (laughs) and because like one thing the tv show did really well is they had in the second episode, when Luke is explaining what Kleos is, the way that he explains it is that it's something that you get attached to your name that makes people respect you, that makes people be afraid of you, that makes people do things for you and listen to you when they otherwise wouldn't. So like the way that Luke sees Kleos is, I can control people with this. And like, that's why he actually wants it. And he's trying to convince little Percy that the reason why you go on quests and do these things is so that people are afraid of you and are willing to like do things for you when they otherwise wouldn't, which is like, so not what like tiny little Percy, any Percy (laughs) would be interested in, but especially little tiny little Percy who just got to camp, he doesn't care about that. Um, But like, that's the way that he sees Kleos. And so he wants to be known so that everyone is afraid of him and everyone has to do what he wants. And this is way before he ever is like talked to by Kronos in any way, shape or form. That's like years and years and years before any of that stuff ever happens. Like he says himself that he decided he needed to turn against the gods because he couldn't beat Ladon. And he was like, how dare they not let me beat this dragon? 
how dare I not be like the best demigod at camp? Now everybody pities me, so now camp just needs to be destroyed. That's like literally basically his like thought process. And that is a, like a, an abusive person. That's the way that they think. If something bad happens, if they're not able to like succeed at something, most people are like, oh, I'll just work harder. I'll like figure it out. Or it's not the end of the world if I'm not the best ever when I'm 16. But yeah. for somebody like him who wants to use it to control everybody, he's like, well, if I'm not the best, it has to be that the world is corrupt and it needs to end because that's the only way that I could ever not be the best at something is if the world is corrupt to start with. And that's the only reason why I lost. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. I mean, and while we're on this subject to chaos, one argument that I saw coming up a lot in Reddit threads, especially was the argument that you look at any of the Greek heroes and they're going to have things that they did that weren't so cool. You know, mm -hmm. like, um, my my biggest example for me, Odysseus is one of my favorite heroes, but he killed Astyanax, who was the two-year-old prince, or not prince, but like son of the prince of Troy. So future king, when you really think about it. And just off of the basis of one day, this kid's going to grow up realizing his royal lineage and what we did to his people, and that's not good. So we can't have this kid still alive. And... Odysseus is the one who decides we need to throw this kid off the walls. Um, and, you know, I don't, I, it's hard to put those things in the same place. I mean, even when you look at somebody like Achilles, who was filled with rage and a little, little like predatory in, in certain places and stuff. Um, I don't think that we remember Achilles necessarily for for being a hero in that sense like i i don't think of achilles as like if i was in trouble i want this dude to come save me i think of odysseus that way like it'd be really fun to see how odysseus weasels his way out of a situation um but with achilles it'd be more like if i saw this dude on the the fighting ground i would be terrified of him um and you know, like, it seems like that's the type of hero that Luke considers himself, I guess. Um, whereas Percy, his whole thing is about the people he cares about. He's he's never gone on a quest that wasn't about somebody who cares about, which Athena calls his weakness, but it's, it's really not. It's what drives him to be brave. Well, I thought of this after we did our podcast last week, but the reason why... Athena thinks that it's his weakness because he wants to help people in a way that is not what this world wants you to be. Like, mm -hmm. they want you to go on these quests because you want to be like a stoic hero and do the right thing even when everything is hard, sort of like stereotype or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. That's what the gods want you to do. So, like, when somebody like Percy is like, I don't care about what's good or right or, like, whatever, I want to go on these things because I just want to help the people around me. I want to like build community with these kids that are my age that are going through similar things as me that like that's what makes her upset about that because that's not what that's not what she wants him to do mm -hmm. and it's dangerous for the gods for the most powerful kid to be like using his position like that because he's putting the demigods first and that's what she actually doesn't like about him is that she he prioritizes him over the gods like <laughs> yes today i got like a comment on one of my videos being like oh i hate how percy jackson shows um athena and i was like laughing about that because i'm like yeah i'm glad that percy jackson pisses off classics who like idolize the gods because it's like you're idolizing super powerful figures that can do anything and destroy your life at any moment like mm -hmm. all of the gods depictions in percy jackson you're probably not going to like if you want to like the gods because yeah. they're super powerful people and you should like be wondering what the hell they're doing because that's dangerous <laughs> that there's been like that like i'm not going to be like worshiping at the feet of a person that can destroy my entire life without even thinking about it like why why would i ever do that um yeah well and the gods of greek mythology are not meant to be revered in that way 
Um, it doesn't feel like they are. When you read the stories, they're not the most moral, you know, like deities. They they are very vengeful. They are very temperamental. And all they really care about is, are there enough people sacrificing at my altars and giving reverence to me? They don't necessarily, you know, like, there's very few stories of them helping humanity. So for them, it really is all about the reverence. So you you definitely hit the nail on the head with that because his reason is not, I want to suck up to the gods. I want to gain chaos for Poseidon. It's, I want to go save my friends. Mm -hmm. He has like the correct way of looking at people in power where he uses them when he absolutely has to, but otherwise he doesn't care what they think of him, really. He just more cares what the other people he sees every day think of him. Like, why does he care about what these gods who just argued about whether they should kill him? Yeah. Of him. Uh, somebody in my comments had a, a good question asking if Luke, um, like, resents the big three kids because they have more power than him. Hmm. And I don't think so. I think that's part of his whole, like, I have a chip on my shoulder thing that leads to him doing all that he does is that I think he feels like he should be the most powerful person in this world. And because his dad is Hermes and not like one of the big three um, people, like people always look at him as somehow less than because he's not one of those kids. And I and I could very easily see that being one of those things he thinks about, about like, this is why this world needs to end because people like me can never be the most powerful supreme overlords of the universe <laughs> because of the like, because the big three kids would like trump us every time. And I, I think I feel like it's like an incredible amount of karma mm -hmm. for Luke that rereading these books from like book two to like book five, basically, it's just him trying to find a big three kid that will take his spot so yeah. that he doesn't have to do it. That's literally all he's doing. He thought like book two and three basically is about him thinking that Thalia would do it. And then when she doesn't do it, like he's literally just trying to find one of them to do things for him that he doesn't want to have to deal with doing or he can't do. Like he he tried to kill Percy a couple times, neither of them worked in the first two books. So he's like, okay, Thalia can do it. And it's like, wait, Thalia doesn't want to kill Percy? Yeah. Thalia, Thalia is choosing Percy's side over me? Like, how is that even possible? But that's very obviously what he tries to do. And then he tries to, at the same book, he's trying to leverage any sort of relationship, whatever he has with Annabeth to try to get her to help get like Thalia or Percy or somebody connected to her. Um, like it's honestly, it's honestly scary when you think about it, like what he was, do, what he was wanting to do when he shows up we haven't read this, but at, we find out about in the last book at some point that he, in the fourth book at some point, he shows up at Annabeth's house when she's at her dad's house. So mm -hmm. nobody else is there. It's just, she's just there. She, none of her other, like, she's far away from camp. And he tries to convince her to just like leave right then, like right there and just leave with him. Yeah. And he doesn't, thank God. <laughs> um, but she, but he sits there and is like, I don't want to run away. I don't want to do this anymore. Will you please leave with me? And like Hermes is the worst enabler on planet Earth because he like gets mad at Annabeth over that. And it's like, is your brain actually leaking? Like what makes you think that your son was actually telling the truth when he said that? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious when you think about Luke's, like we'll go more into it in like detail later, but his whole like pattern when it comes to this stuff that he likely was doing that to try to force Percy to, to like take over, to be like, I have Annabeth, I won't give her back unless you do what I say, sort of thing. Yeah. Nothing else that he was doing was working and his body was about to be taken over at that time. So he had to pull something. And that was like the only thing he could think of and the only time that Annabeth would have ever even thought about going with him was if she was alone around nobody else. And so that would have been when she was at her dad's house. And that's why he tried to talk to her when she was there. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, that's obviously not what he was actually wanting to do because of all the other stuff he does 
going before that and then after that like if he actually was feeling bad about what he was doing he wouldn't have done the decisions that he did like i don't know if we should go into this now or not but um i just think about like when we were reading the end of titan's curse it like fascinates me that there are people who think that when Luke was saying, like, Thalia, save me, because if you don't, he's going to do this, he's going to make me do the other thing, that mm-hmm. people legitimately take him at face value and think that he is saying, like, oh, help save me from this because I've realized that what I'm doing is wrong. And it's like, do you get that he's asking Thalia, who's only been alive again for three months at the absolute most, to give up her entire life and for her to be killed instead? Like, if he actually didn't, if he actually thought, like, if Luke actually th- realized, like, oh, I shouldn't have joined Kronos. This was a big mistake. I never should have done any of this. This was horrible. I, I, I'm, I, how do I get out of this? The response wouldn't be, like, let me manipulate somebody else to take over for me. Yeah. It would have been, let me find a way to stop this. <laughs> Like, that's what every person really, if you actually realize what you're doing is wrong, you try to find a way to stop what you're doing. You don't try to find somebody else to do it for you so that you don't have to do it yourself because it's still going forward. If you really realize what you did was the wrong thing, you would want to make it stop. You wouldn't want to be like, it can, it can progress anyway, because I don't actually care about what I did. (laughs) Yeah. I, I interpret it more as this feels really awful in my body. Like, Percy keeps remarking on how he looks physically ill, like, and so he's scared because it's so real for him. It's not necessarily, I'm scared I want to back out. It's, I'm scared I don't want me to be the person this is happening to. Yeah, and the, one of the, like, maddening things about abusive people like Luke is that they are fine with putting other people through these sort of things. Mm-hmm. But when it's them that is suddenly going through it, it's like the world should end, like like literally in this story. But and figuratively for other abusive people, they they act like the they have to go through like a small amount of the things they put other people through, and suddenly they're like, "But what about me? What about all these horrible things that are happening to me?" And it's like, "What about you? What you've been doing to me, you idiot? <laughs> like, uh, like this is like a tiny bit of what you've been putting everybody else through." And you're like, I don't want to do this. And so, but that's just how abusive people are, is that he doesn't want to have to actually hold any real responsibility for what he's doing. And so he's like, well, I want to be able to help Kronos literally kill and murder hundreds of children that I personally know intimately. And I want to be able to be his right-hand man to become a new god and take over the world. But I don't want anyone to actually be upset with me. Or I don't want to actually have to, like, put myself in, like, any sort of, like, firing line where I'm in any way in, like, danger. And so I'm just, he was, I'm sure, just thinking all those years that he would be able to manipulate some kid to take over for him. But then, you know, Percy um, wouldn't do it, and then he just tried to kill him. And, like, the show and the TV show, the show and the book is the same that way, where once he realizes that Percy won't, join him he's just like okay bye now (laughs) like the show he doesn't actually try because thankfully annabeth is there to stop him but he had he was gonna do it (laughs) if annabeth wasn't there um and he tries with thalia it doesn't work he never gets access to nico because weirdly one of the nicest things nico maybe have ever done was that he ran away Mm -hmm. and it it was harder for him to find him and he had to like try to find him in order to try to get an 11 year old kid an 11 year old kid yeah, to do that for him. But that's what I was saying before about like the little things with abusive people where they like put their wants and their needs and what they want and what will make them happy. It's like, it's like, you know, when like somebody at your job or something or school or whatever asks you to do something and you're like, I really don't want to do this. <laughs> Like, yeah, you could try to make somebody else do it for you or you could like not do it and act like something else and like lie about why you didn't do it or something like that. But most people don't do those things because there's something that like stops them because they feel bad. They feel bad about lying. 
They feel bad about like making somebody else look guilty that never actually did anything. They feel responsible to like want to like do their job or do their homework or do what they're supposed to do because they know that even if they don't want to do it right now, something like that they do want in the long term will happen because of this thing. Mm -hmm. um, but like abusive people don't care about that. They yeah. don't care. If there's something that they don't want to do, they're not going to do it. And they're and instead they're just going to do whatever they can to the people around them to get them to do it for them. Or they're just going to take out the fact that they have to do something they don't want to do on the other people around them <laughs> instead of like just dealing with it. That's like their coping mechanism is like making other people feel bad all the time. Well, yeah. And OK, so let's get back to the villain monologue, because here's what mm -hmm. Luke has to say about why he's in this when he is at his cockiest. This is before Kronos has taken over his body, but at the same time, he is fully on board with what he's doing still. Um, like we just saw him being completely disrespectful to camp because he's thinking, I'm going to take out Percy and I'm never coming back here. Um, so Percy says, he's brainwashing you, Luke, meaning Kronos. And Luke says, you're wrong. He showed me that my talents are being wasted. You know what my quest was two years ago, Percy? My father, Hermes, wanted me to steal a golden apple from the Garden of the Hesperides and return it to Olympus. After all the training I'd done, that was the best he could think of. And Percy says, that's not an easy quest. Hercules did it. But Luke says, exactly. Where's the glory in repeating what others have done? All the gods know how to do is repay, replay their past. My heart wasn't in it. The dragon in the garden gave me this. He pointed at the scar. And when I came back, all I got was pity. I wanted to pull Olympus down stone by stone right then, but I bided my time. I began to dream of Kronos. He convinced me to steal something worthwhile, something no hero had ever had the courage to take. When we went up on that winter solstice field trip, while the other campers were asleep, I snuck into the throne room and took Zeus's master bolt right from his chair. Hades Helm of Darkness too. You wouldn't believe how easy it was. The Olympians are so arrogant, they never dreamed someone would dare steal them, steal from them. Their security is horrible. I was halfway across New Jersey before I heard the storms rumbling and I knew they discovered my theft. One thing about this, about his like bragging that he's doing right now before he kills this 12 year old child mm -hmm. is that he's lying. Mm -hmm. Aries caught him. Well, he says that next. Yeah, um, like, he's lying. Aries caught him. Aries mm -hmm. caught you, bro. If Aries wasn't Aries, you would have gotten killed. That yeah. so Percy um, <laughs> calls him on this immediately. He's like, so why didn't you bring the items to Kronos? Mm -hmm. And he says, um, it, it says his smile wavered. Um, I, I got overconfident. Zeus sent out his sons and daughters to help find the stolen boat. Bolt, Artemis, Apollo, my father, Hermes. But it was Aries who caught me. I could have beaten him, but I wasn't careful enough. He disarmed me, took my items of power, threatened to return them to Olympus and burn me alive. Then Kronos's voice came to me and told me what to say. I put the idea in Ares' head about a great war between the gods. I said all he had to do was hide the items away for a while and watch the others fight. Ares got a wicked gleam in his eyes. I knew he was hooked. He let me go and I returned to Olympus before anyone had noticed my absence. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, he's like bragging, being like, I'm so bad. I'm so cool. The gods are stupid. And it's like, actually, one of the gods stopped you. If it was any other god but Ares, who just likes to see chaos happen, you would have been killed like that day. Yeah. Like, nothing would have ever been stolen because you would be dead right now. And yeah. That would be a whole other issue, <laughs> but like you would be dead right now if it was anyone else but Ares. And I mean, he says that they sent out Hermes. Hermes probably would have given in somehow anyway too. But um, if it was Apollo or Artemis, oh hell no, yeah, a kid would have died. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, are you sure that they're like, you know, their security is that bad? Mm -hmm. It's like I'm pretty sure they just know that they're super powerful fucking gods. Yeah, you were just like lucky, honestly, in the moment that it was Aries that caught you. Mm -hmm. And Aries is the easiest to manipulate because he's not known for being smart. He's known for just wanting a fight, which is exactly what Luke wants. 
And, like, I also want to point out, like, the golden childness of Luke complaining that he didn't have a real, like, a real quest to go on. And, like, oh, the only quest my dad could, like, send me on was one that somebody had done before. Even though, like, we just read how scary Ladon is. Like, he has a hundred heads. (laughs) Like, that's not an easy quest at all. And he also got Hermes to let him do that alone instead of having like two other people with him like they're supposed to Mm -hmm. Um, but either way like are you complaining that nothing is wrong in your life that you don't need to go on a death defying quest like these quests are terrifying yeah absolutely terrifying they're in danger every single second that they're on these quests like when percy is on them he's just thinking about like i might die today the, like the like he literally says that in the books I might die today or like I don't care like in Titan's curse it's like it doesn't matter that I don't have any clothes or any food or any money because I might be dead tomorrow anyway and so it's like these are like terrifying situations like where you are like forced to do these things because people you care about will die horrible things will happen so you're forced to go on a quest Like, he is looking at it as if it's, like, a fun adventure. Like, he's looking at it as if he's, like, one of the hobbits in Lord of the Rings. And he's like, I want to go out and, like, have a fun adventure, like, um, in, like, the the first, the actual Hobbit movies, not the Lord of the Rings movies, where where it's much more, like, simple than than Sauron stuff. He's treating it like that. And it's like, do you understand that, like, people die? That like people die on these quests regularly and you're complaining that you don't have you're not able to go on one because you think that it will it will be you being to prove that you're like the baddest bitch around but it's like do you get how insane it is especially to percy at age 12 to be like i am so mad that the gods didn't make me be traumatized <laughs> By yeah. making me go on a quest like this before I was ready, when I was a tiny little child. How dare they protect me and keep me in this camp where I'm safe? How dare they do that? And be, when I could like be out there in the world showing off. Yeah. It's like, what are, you, what are you saying right now? This is like what makes you mad is that like the gods don't let you go out there and die and or that like things are generally going okay ish right now where there's like nothing ha- happening where the end of the world is happening and so you don't have to put yourself in that situation it's like how could that possibly ever be it's like that person you know like i run into people like this sometimes online i don't even know what to do but it's like people who um Like the people who make like a true crime case, like their entire personality, where they will take like a case that's very similar to my life, where I'm like trying desperately not to watch any videos because they literally bring back memories from my life. And they will make videos like nonstop about this one case and make it their entire platform and talk about it nonstop. But it's like obvious from the way that they're talking about it that they've never experienced anything like this before. And it's almost like they like the idea of like being close to something like that, like because they almost feel like it's exciting somehow um, because they don't actually understand what that really means or or whatever. And so to them, it's just exciting to talk about these stories because it's something that they've never actually experienced before. That's like what Luke reminds me of, of like somebody who hears these stories about these crazy quests that like former um, heroes would go on. And to him, he feels like, oh, that would be so cool. It's almost like a little kid when you hear these adventures are like, oh, it'd be so cool to like use a big sword and go in these fights and things like that. But at some point, these kids realize like how terrifying it would be to actually do that in real life. But he like never got there. And so he just wants he just wants like the notoriety and to be known so badly in this world that he is okay with doing that. And it's so confusing because he is known in this world. Like all the kids at camp worship you. Yeah. Point that they, to Percy's face, after they all know that he tried to kill him multiple times, they still compare Percy to Luke and they still say to him, Luke was a better fighter than you. 
and <laughs> things like that to him in multiple books or like kids are like leaving camp to join Luke because they like him so much. And so it's like, you do have notoriety. You do have a lot of respect in this world, yeah. but like a lot of abusive people, they are never satisfied with like what they get. Like it's never enough. It's never like it. Cause it, that kind of stuff can never make you happy. Like, other people thinking that you're cool is never going to make you actually that happy because you actually have to like yourself in order to actually feel happy at some point. Yeah. You obviously don't. Um, but they just think like, Oh, I just haven't done enough. And if I just keep doing more, then at one point I'll suddenly just like, like it, everything will be great. And it's like, even if he would have succeeded and Kronos would have like killed everybody, he still wouldn't have actually been happy. Yeah. Because people like that are never actually happy. <laughs> yeah, well, and there's a certain breed of golden child. I mean, the word golden child, I feel like sometimes gets misused for just anybody who doesn't get in trouble in their family. Mm -hmm. Where, um, like, the type of golden child I am when I think of, like, Rory Gilmore, or when I think of, you know, like, people who I actually consider golden children, Helga Pata or Olga Pataki, um, it's people who are, are high achieving individuals, and, but that gets like so ground into them that they lose their sense of direction. So Azula is a good example where she is an excellent fighter. One of the first scenes we see her in, she's doing lightning bending where we hadn't seen it in the Avatar The Last Airbender series before that moment. And all the two ladies that are training her can say is that a hair falls out of place. And sometimes being a golden child feels like that. You know, it feels like, oh, I train, I'd be the best. I know how to do this. I know how to perform well enough that people start complimenting me. And I feel like this big fish in a little pond. But then when we start putting that pressure on ourselves, it's hard to know where to take it, where the line is because like we've just had this toxic relationship with success so um luke has had a toxic relationship with success in that he's risen the ranks through camp like there's nothing else you can do without literally fighting monsters you know he's he's the best sword fighter at camp he could beat anybody there he's everybody's friend because he is the head of the cabin of you know like the god of travelers so they take in everybody he um he does kind of stand as a leader because he's one of the oldest kids there um he has nowhere else to go there so i do understand that in a sense and in a sense of it getting boring and like mm -hmm. oh people are gonna stop paying attention to me because i haven't done anything new or exciting in a while but yeah like i it's hard to say that chronos is that um because to go on with the, the villain monologue. Oh wait, before you, yeah. somebody asked how old. Luke was 16 when he went on the quest with Ladon where he didn't beat Ladon. Mm -hmm. He's 19 in the first Percy Jackson book. Yeah, so he's like actually in a, like, I know we talk about like brain development when we say adult a lot these days. And yeah, he doesn't have a fully fully formed frontal cortex, but at the same time, he's not a middle schooler like Annabeth and Percy. Yeah, like a 19 year old talking to a 12 year old. Uh, I mean, you look at like the pictures of like Walker and Charlie on set of season one, like that's basically the same dynamic. Like Charlie was 18 and Walker was like 13. Mm -hmm. Like there is no way that if Charlie was saying those sort of things to a kid that young that he wouldn't know or understand like what he was doing because he did in a good way <laughs> like with Walker like trying to help him and things like that on set and so there's no way that 19 year old Luke didn't know what he was doing when he was doing all this stuff yeah so um right after he talks about how he kind of failed this quest from Kronos, we'll call it, of stealing the helm and the master bolt, um, which in my opinion, not a failure because the, the helm and the lightning bolt still aren't back with the Olympians. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I digress. So he says, afterwards, the Lord of the Titans, he, he punished me with nightmares. 
I swore not to fail again. Back at Camp Half-Blood, in my dreams, I was told that a second hero would arrive, one who could be tricked into taking the bolt and the helm the rest of the way from Ares down to Tartarus. And that's when um, Percy starts making the connections of all of the things that he did, the shoes, um, summoning a hellhound into the camp. And um, so, like, here he is saying, you know, I am I'm doubling down on being evil because I feel like I failed and I don't want to fail again. Mm. And it's him putting that pressure on himself because, again, he, he needs to be the best at something. Doesn't matter what, but something. Yeah, and, like, honestly, if he was at all a good person, he could have been the one to tell the gods or tell Chiron that Kronos was in his dreams and was trying to and try to convince him to steal the helm and the lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. He would have been known forever as the one that saved them all and every god would like do whatever he wanted for him yeah. to like help him for doing that. But because he's not a good person, <laughs> um, he doesn't even think about that, about how he could use that to get the gods to like him a lot. And he wouldn't have to kill anybody in order to do that. <laughs> he doesn't, he just doesn't think like that. Um, and I guess that's like a, a good example of something that is one of the things that a lot of like Luke apologists, we call them, like to say, or this weird thing that has happened where people say that like, oh, Luke had to be there because if Luke hadn't been there, then Percy would have done it one day, or Luke had to, had to do this because Percy never would have been able to like change how things work in this world without Luke doing this stuff first. So like Luke is like this like hero guy who like fell on his sword because he's actually the reason why the world like progressed and things became better and blah, blah, blah. And like the number one thing I always say in defense of that is like Percy's entire way that he learns about this world is fucked up by Luke. Like, he is attacked at school by Mrs. Dodds because they're going after him because of Luke. Mm -hmm. Like, every, he is, he has to watch his mother seemingly die in front of him because of Luke. He is sent off on a quest right after he gets to camp when he has no idea what he's doing because of Luke. Like, every single thing that ever happens to Percy in this world is colored because of Luke. Even after Luke is gone, like, that's his experience of finding out about all of this. Like, he was told so quickly in a really traumatizing way. And it was, it was never really like, he never had time to understand what was actually happening. And like that was happening only because of him. And it's like, how do you, you do not know what Percy would have done in this world if he was able to join it in a way where he wasn't in fight or flight constantly because people are constantly trying to hurt him because of, something that Luke was doing. Like if he was able to just join this world like everyone else did mm -hmm. and, you know, find out about the prophecy and find out about things as time went on, but in a way where it wasn't already actively happening and he just like didn't know about it already, he probably would have been more successful. Mm -hmm. He probably would have had an easier time. You don't know what Percy like would have done to get the gods to change how they do things and use the position he has in the world in a good way if he wasn't constantly having to like run around stopping people from killing people or, or the people that he loved yeah watching people he loved die or watching people he loves be in serious danger where they could die or like having to hide how he feels about luke because nobody else believes that he's never coming back besides him and having that like pressure on him all the time like there's a lot of different things that he could have done that would have been a lot easier to do if Luke didn't put him in this position. And it's just one of those things that really grates on me because people say that, like, abusers say this to you. Like, they literally say, like, you should be grateful for me because if it wasn't for me, you never would have, like, succeeded in life. Or you should be glad that I'm telling you this because nobody else has the guts to tell you this. I'm the only one who would ever put up with you you should be happy that I'm talking to you this way because I'm telling you the truth. And that's literally the kind of stuff they say to you. And so when I see people say that stuff about a fictional character, I'm like, oh my God, like, what are you, what are you saying to people that you know or may not even know in real life that have been through things like this where you're, if you say this about a fictional person, I'm like, I have a hard time believing that you wouldn't think this about a real person. 
because mm -hmm. there is almost nothing worse than you can say to somebody who's being abused than to try to tell them that actually the abuser doing this to you was one of the best things that ever happened to you. Or it's just the idea. I don't think they completely understand what they're saying when they say this, but basically what you're saying is that Percy would not be a good person unless he was horribly traumatized first by Luke. Like the idea that like there's something wrong with him and that he needs Luke to hurt him and harm him for many years in order to keep him in line. And unless he had Luke there constantly scaring the shit out of him and just keeping him terrified for years on end and having that hanging over his head, then if you didn't have that, that he would suddenly like make bad choices or become a bad person. And I'm like, do you guys, I don't think they understand. Like that is literally what abusers say. That is like what they say to try to justify how they treat people is like, oh, I have to do this. I have to say this. And I have to treat you this way because if I don't, you're like too innocent and you're going to like hurt people or do bad things. Like the whole idea, the majority of the time you're in therapy when you have somebody like this in your life is because you're so sure that you're going to be a bad person that like there's a bad person inside of you and you're just like waiting for it to come out and you're terrified about having relationships with anybody because you don't want to hurt anybody and you're and you're so sure that you are going to because this person made you feel like there is something wrong and off about you and the only thing that stopped you from doing it before was them being there and that's literally a trauma bond like a trauma bond is when you feel like you have to be with an abusive person so that they can tell you what to do because you think that if you made your own decisions that you would like ruin your own life and that you can't make decisions on your own because you're not capable of doing that. And so even if they're hurting you the most, you need them there. Like, why are you arguing that Percy needs that? Yeah. What about Percy has ever made you believe that he needs that? Like. What has he ever done that makes you think that he needs somebody to keep him in line? Otherwise, he's going to like rage out and do horrible things because I can't think of anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Percy that we meet in the first book is very, very normal for that age. And like, yes, he he's been accused of behavioral problems. We know that it's because he's been gaslit, but even still, like, I would say that is all within the realm of normal for that age for somebody going through as much as he's gone through. And you look at the fact that he is at these, like, private schools where he has to stay away from his parents. When he goes home, there's Gabe and his mom. And his mom's working herself to death at these, like, lower-end jobs, whereas Gabe is gambling away all of their money and doesn't even work. Um like he's pretty normal for the circumstances he's growing up in and um it does seem very much I, i've talked about how one of my favorite male tropes is bad boy with a heart of gold and that's what percy is because he's not necessarily like a lawful good type hero you know i if anything he's chaotic good you know he just he's very chaotic so um I don't know. It's it's hard to imagine that there's ever a universe where Percy can be swayed that way, even if Percy himself understands why Luke is angry at the world. Yeah, and I, I guess that's why people think like there's this one scene in the Heroes of Olympus books where he's he he's very like fed up in that series in general. Like he just did all these things in these books that were still reading and then he got kidnapped like right afterwards and was in a coma for six months. Yeah, I would also be just like very traumatized and upset because in that world, like Luke has only been dead for like four months when he gets kidnapped. Like there's, he has, they don't have any time to like recover. And so there's a part in that book series where he, they're trying to fight something and he sees a God standing there just like watching them. And I don't even remember what God it is, but he thinks in his head during that part, like, oh, maybe Luke was right. <laughs> and like people use that as like a way to say like that Percy would like turn into Luke if Luke wasn't there or Percy was like dark or Percy was this or that. And it's like, have you ever had any angry thoughts in your head in a moment, but you wouldn't actually do that? 
Yeah, because let me tell you that 12 year old me, oh my God, if like people could hear the thoughts that like 12 to like 18 year old me was having when I looked like my face was like blank and I looked totally calm, like I was totally fine, they would have been terrified <laughs> because I would be thinking constantly about how I wanted to like stab everybody around me and what just wanted to hurt everyone would i ever actually do that like no i have a crisis like a panic attack when i think that i might have hurt somebody accidentally <laughs> even like at that age i would still feel like that and i still feel like that now i like cry sometimes about things that i might have done that have hurt people i don't even know if it actually has if i actually have done it <laughs> and so like just because you're thinking something when you're angry and you're fed up at somebody does it mean that you're actually going to do it? And it's that whole, like, that reaction to Percy feels like the pressure that, like, victims are constantly under, where the people that hurt us can do the absolute worst things you have ever heard anyone ever do. And then they'll be like, but their mom was mean to them six times. And so you should just, like, forgive them because they obviously, like, we're just having like a bad life and they were sad and traumatized. And then you're like sitting there and like, but what about me, you fucking bitches? And they're like, well, you're just a bitch. You're just me and you're just ungrateful. You just needed that person around you. And it's like, how is this, how is this working? <laughs> like, how is this working right now? That Luke can sit there and be like, I want to kill Percy when he's 12. And then He's like, I want to kill him again when he's 13 and I want to like traumatize Selena and I want to kill all these kids and I actively try to kill Thalia and I try to guilt trip her into giving up her entire life when she comes back to life despite me trying to kill her. And I try to like, like groom Annabeth really badly. I try to kidnap her at one point and all of that is just like, okay, that's just Luke. But when Percy is like one time, is just like mad at the gods. It's like, that's what's going to make him go bad. <laughs> It's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Speaking of Talia, I, I do want to say he brings her up in this speech because um, as he's uh, as he's monologuing and, and Percy's calling him out on um, on like, oh, you you did the shoes, you did the hellhound. Um, Percy says, um, hold on, let me see where's a good part to start. Luke tells him you should have died in Tartarus, Percy, but don't worry, I'll leave you with my little friend to set things right, meaning the scorpion that he has um, crawling up Percy's leg at this point. And Percy, like gritting his teeth, tells him, Talia died to save you, and this is how you repay her? He yells back at him, don't speak of Talia. The gods let her die. That's one of the many things they will pay for. And um, so... For him to go from that, you know your friend who died on your behalf is now physically being represented by a tree. And you go and poison that. Like, I know we laughed at the movie version, but movie Annabeth holding the pine cone <laughs> in the stick. Like, yeah. but there's, there's a certain part of me that would be that kind of sentimental too if that was my friend. You know, like if that was literally my friend who transfigured in front of my face. Um, mm -hmm. And he's just readily poisoning her, not knowing that she can be saved with the Golden Fleece and that when she is saved with the Golden Fleece, she's going to come back. And then when she does come back and she is right in front of his face, he's like, I'm scared because this guy's taking over my body. Can you please help and, and put it in your body? And she's like, no. <laughs> yeah, who are you? <laughs> like, I'm just going to kick you off this cliff instead. That sounds better. <laughs> um but yeah when you were talking about that i was just thinking like it just like popped in my head and i was like did luke fight all those things when they're out on the road because they were trying to get the gods to save them to try to be like a little golden child to be like i want my daddy to prove how much he loves me by like getting us out of this mess and it's like that's not how these how like gods work and that's not how people yeah. in general work like if you're going you can't just like self-destruct your life and to try to get people to like damsel and distress you in order to like prove to you that they that you that they care about you or something that sort of stuff never works that's also manipulative 
to mm -hmm. do that because you could just tell them that you want them to talk to you instead of doing things like this. But when when you were saying that, I was like, is that what he was doing? Was he like trying to cause all this chaos so that Hermes or somebody would, or Zeus or whoever would come in and like rescue them from his own mess and then was like mad that they didn't rescue him and he basically killed his best friend um, yeah. because he was creating so much chaos. Like that seems likely because, because of how he is. But it's like, you could have just said out loud that you missed your dad Mm -hmm. and that you wish that he was around instead of like doing all of this craziness that would actually have been easier for you to skip all of those steps but why would he do, why would he do that <laughs> um yeah. but yeah i just i don't even i like laugh when i hear the things that he says and that's just because i was exposed to my dad for 29 years and so when i hear people who are abusive like this say stuff there's just this part of my voice that's just like this, that's just like making fun of them the way that i used to make fun of him and in my own head all the time because when you're not afraid of them anymore they are the most over dramatic like emo little bitches you have ever met in your entire life <laughs> but it takes like a lot of work to like get to that place one day but that's like what i think of when i hear him say this stuff not in a way to like take away anything that he's doing, but it is actually completely insane to be like, don't mention Thalia, how dare you mention her name? I'm so mad that the gods killed her that like five months from now, I'm gonna kill her instead. Mm -hmm. Like that'll get them. <laughs> but that's like the kind of thing I mean by like, they're so like over dramatic and weird that they'll be like, how dare you do this thing to me? And then they'll do like the exact, they've already done the exact same thing. It, to compare this to like Dionysus, like in Titan's Curse, when Dionysus is like, you're a horrible hero, heroes always do bad things, and Percy is like, didn't you cheat on your wife? <laughs> <laughs> like, didn't you cheat? Aren't you like at camp right now being, sub I'm being subjected to you because you cheated on your wife, but you're ranting about how like heroes are like the reason why things are bad and, and never treat people well, and he just like never responds to that because there's nothing he can say. But yeah. that's what that like reminds me of or like with my own dad, I know I've told you this before about how when I was growing up, my dad actually had the literal audacity to say to me all the time that he was afraid of his dad growing up and he didn't want me to be afraid of him the way that he was afraid of his dad. Ugh, yeah. <laughs> and like my sister was the golden child and so when she got old enough, she would pop up and be like, well, that's too bad because we are afraid of you like that, you stupid idiot. <laughs> and and would start swearing at him and stuff and they would start yelling at each other. But And I would just sit there and hear that and I would just be like, how is that even possible that you are saying this to me while this sort of stuff is happening right now? Ooh. How How is it possible that you could possibly ever think that I'm not absolutely terrified of you? And like, but he literally thought that. Like he honestly thought that he thought that he was not as bad as his own dad and like that's what it, that's what the stuff with like luke luke reminds me so much of that of he's like trying he's killed literal children and he's like but the gods are worse and it's like you you're one of them and you're killing these children and they know you you could come up to them and just stab them right then and there because they actually trust you and yeah. you're doing it anyway like at least the gods are doing it in a way where they're not around. Like they're they're like negligent. And so these things are happening to these children in like a negligent way where the gods are neglecting their children. So like bad things are happening to their kids and they could do more to try to stop it, but they don't because they're just negligent like that. You are actually doing that. Like you are actually making the decisions to do that. Like you are taking Percy onto the forest to kill him. You are trying to kill him and Annabeth and Grover in the second book. You're actually making these active choices to kill everybody at camp. You're actually doing this. At least when it comes to the gods, they're like far away. They're not like Hermes did not come up to you and like make your mother become mental, severely like mentally ill. That was like a sad happen, like thing that happened, but he didn't actually cause that to happen but you are. And so like, how can you possibly ever think that you have like, uh, like a, a leg to stand on when it comes to like morality or 
how people treat each other when anything that you've done, he's done is so much worse than anything else that any of the gods have ever done. Cause it's like, you know how bad this feels and you're doing it anyway. So like, what do you, what, do you, why are you complaining about the gods? Like the gods are not the ones doing this stuff to these kids. You are, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, like, that really is the end of his monologue, because after that, um, he basically, like, the scorpion takes over the scene. He says his, like, eugenics line about how the rest of humanity is going to go back in the caves and yeah. like that, um, which also is, like, can we just... <sighs> the thing with a lot of people who try to, like, defend Luke, I see, is they have this idea of, like, Luke was, like, doing the right thing, or he was... There's this idea that people have that like, oh, you need to like cause a really violent revolution in order for anything to change. And yeah. you have to like do it in the most aggressive, horrible way that like harms the most people. And like sometimes in history, you know, there are times where that is necessary because everything else has been tried and nothing else has worked. And so the people have like no other choice. But I see people talk about it as if like, Every once in a while, I'll see like a, a video series on here of somebody doing like a series that's like imagining like Percy doing like a uprising or whatever against the gods. And I'm like, I don't think you guys actually got what Rick Riordan was trying to say mm -hmm. in these first five books, because you don't need to do that. Like you don't need to set fire, like literally and figuratively to your entire life and everyone around you in order to get things to change. Sometimes when it comes to like family situations like this anyway, sometimes knowing how to talk to everybody involved without like burning everything to the ground is actually the thing that gets more things done. Yeah. Because you cannot tell me that the reason why, the reason why Percy did anything successful with helping the demigods is because of Luke because Luke just delayed everything for like years. Like 12 year old Percy, when he gets to camp, one of the first things he says is that he knows that it's wrong that these kids at camp aren't being claimed and he got claimed right away. And like, why do I get to be claimed when all these other kids never get to? Or like when he meets kids later on that whose parents are not like one of the major gods and so they don't have like a cabin at camp. And he's like, every kid, deserves to have like a place at camp. And so, yeah, it isn't right that there aren't cabins for like the lesser known gods and we should, we should build them because everyone should have a place at camp. Those things would have happened so much faster if the world wasn't falling apart for years on end. And it, it would have happened way quicker because he would have actually had time to like actually use his position as Poseidon's kid to get the gods to do this stuff like the violence of everything is what like delayed that from happening. And like, I feel like I can say this because of my own life that there's, I'm very grateful in my own life that I saw a few therapists along the way that stopped me from doing like the thing that a lot of people do on the internet sometimes where they like make videos, like calling directly out the people in their family that abuse them and like, show their picture and say their name because they want to like get them fired or or just like get back at them for the ways that they've hurt them um and i'm glad that those people stopped me because all of the relationships that i have in my life right now would not be there like i don't honestly don't even know like what i would have done in my life for the last five months if I did that, because the fam the two family members that have been paying literally all of my bills for the last five months because I was unemployed, ran out of unemployment, and I have no other money, and it took until like this past week to actually get a job. Um, like I have had literally nothing at all. The only money I've been getting is from family members whose like relationships I've gotten back in the last couple of years those people would not have talked to me anymore if I would have gone on the internet and like blown everything up and had strangers contacting them because I was making videos on the internet. Even if I was right for being upset, I guess this is like a bigger idea that is reflected well with this story. It's like, yeah, the like victims or whatever, like, yeah, we should be upset. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we are allowed, we are allowed to be mad. Like 
Percy is like the number one person that if he ever wanted to like yell at the gods and beat them up or do something against them, you could understand more than anyone why he would want to do that because of how much stuff he's constantly under still. Yeah. Just because he was born, he had nothing to do with that, but he's under so much stress because of that. You can understand why, but he is never going to do that. He's not, just because we could do that doesn't mean that we actually want to. That's part of being like a survivor to say of situations like this is that you know you could do that, but you also like care a lot about people. And so you don't want to do that because when you've been through something, I guess this is like a good example to just to like compare like Percy versus Luke is like when you've actually been through like really, really traumatic stuff that like really hurts you a lot and you know how horrible it feels to go through that, you don't want anyone else to feel that way. Even the people that have hurt you, you know, because you know how bad that feels, you know that it doesn't actually help anything. And you know that like, even if you do get a bunch of people riled up against the people that are, are that hurt you, it doesn't actually change anything that happened to you. Mm-hmm. And so it doesn't like fix anything. Like Percy could get like everyone to turn against the gods and try to start like a re- a little revolt or whatever too but it doesn't change all the traumatizing things that he's been through it just creates more trauma on top of things that he already has experienced because now he would be in the middle of this huge mess on top of everything else that has already happened to him that he hasn't dealt with and he's aware in these books that like that's not actually going to help anything and i just want to help people so that they never experience what i have experienced and that's usually where most of us end up is like Yeah, I guess I could get on the internet and yell about my horrible father and he would be, he, on, he would, he's dead now, so he would be fine with it. (laughs) He'd be like, could he stop me? And, but like, and even if his family got mad at me, I could do that, but I'm like, I don't want to though. I like want to help other people who are going through similar things not have as hard of a time as I did. Because Mm -hmm. that actually feels a lot better. That feels much more constructive. And that actually is like stopping those things from happening. And like Luke is okay with creating all this violence and hurting all these people around him and almost like enjoys it because he hasn't actually like, he doesn't actually know what it's like to be like one of his victims. Yeah. He's just resentful of other people. And so he thinks that he should just do whatever he wants. But it's like, if he was actually aware or cared (laughs) about how he was hurting people, he wouldn't want to do it anymore, but he doesn't actually care. And so he's fine with doing like this crazy violent thing that he knows likely won't work. Or even if he, honestly, in the stories, he's like quite sure that it's going to be successful um, until the very end when he realizes that he's not, that it's not. And he's like, I might as well just take myself out now to act, to like give myself something. <laughs> so they don't just like throw me into the fields of punishment for all time, which they should do that anyway. <laughs> Like, I literally hope that he's there. Um, But that's like a good example of like, like, it's a really easy way to tell when somebody is actually like really severely like traumatized by their life versus Mm -hmm. somebody who had some traumatic things happen to them, but they're so wrapped up in their own stuff that they don't, they use that as an excuse to do the bad things they're doing to people. Because most of us have been through the most stuff are like the most empathetic people out there, like Percy is who would like do anything at all to help somebody so that they never feel what you have felt. They would never want to inflict that onto other people because we know that doesn't actually get anywhere. And that's, that's to go back to like how people try to like make Luke's life sound like more tragic or abusive or sad or whatever than it is. The like fun, like logic game that I like to play with people at this point, like granted, I don't talk to like Luke apologists because that would be bad for my mental health. (laughs) But if, but if, but if I did, um, the kind of thing I would ask them is like, how do you feel about school shooters? Like the most recent school shooters who were from very abusive homes, they had very abusive family members who literally bought them guns so they could kill more people. Do you think that they should be let out of prison? Do you think that what they did is okay? Do you think that they should get away with what they did because they have an abusive family? Because if you don't, then why are you saying that about Luke? Because he's the, that's the exact same person. He is the exact same person as those people. And if you wouldn't be okay with 
a school shooter or somebody like that getting away with their crimes because they had a tragic backstory, you shouldn't be okay with a fictional character doing it either because it's the exact same story. Why are you okay with Luke doing this to people? And especially the only way that you like try to make what he's doing all right is by taking things away from Percy. You have to turn him into a worst person to make what Luke is doing to him at all justifiable. Like, I honestly think that I ascended into another like realm <laughs> when I saw a very, very big creator on here, like over 200,000 followers make a video saying, trying to say that Luke, or not Luke, trying to say that Percy resented having to share a cabin with Tyson in Sea of Monsters to try to make the comparison that he was like Luke because Luke didn't like having to take care of all the kids in the Hermes cabin. And I'm like, that is literally not even what happened. <laughs> like, he never does that. He never feels, re the only resentfulness thing that he feels in that entire book when it comes to Tyson is how everyone else treats Tyson. And like- yeah, and his dad of like, why did, why yeah. send this kid and why now? Yeah, like him being frustrated because his dad did this in his life and he doesn't understand why because he won't just tell him why is not him being like resentful of tyson like percy it's like funny when i think about that like because like uh, spoilers for like filming stuff if you don't want to know anything at all about season two but just like counting off the top of my head like i think every scene we've seen them film outside has had a scene a part in it where percy is protecting tyson yeah. Like, the first scene we ever saw of him was him yelling at Annabeth because she was being mean to Tyson. The the scene where they were, like, fighting Clarice or something um, when at, like, the place where they fight, like, the, the Hydra. Like, him and Tyson are, like, sleeping on the beach together and, like, Annabeth isn't sleeping next to them. <laughs> and, and, like, when the scary ghost people are coming up to him, he's, like, calming Tyson down when he's, like, all scared and stuff. And so, like, almost... Every scene we've seen them do so far, he's trying to help Tyson somehow. And so it's like, are you like, are you sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you are you are trying to stretch the truth of this story so far to try to make anything that Percy has ever done relatable to anything Luke has done, that you are literally writing fan fiction. You are trying to make him resent his brother who he never once in his entire life has resented. By the time he gets to camp, he has argued with like seven different people, including his best friend. And it's at the time that that scene happens when they're in the cabin and Tyson starts crying and saying like, I just, I don't wanna be a bad monster. I'll be a good monster, Percy. And Percy is like, I'm gonna kill everybody at this camp. Yeah. And, like, and is like telling Tyson, you're not a monster. Don't say those things about yourself. At that time, he is not talking to Annabeth because he because she's being so mean to Tyson. And he doesn't want to talk to her because of how mean she is being to him. And it's like, are you really trying to say that he resents sharing a cabin with him? If you have to literally invent things that Percy has done that never happens in the books to then invent backstory to make Luke look more like understandable like luke literally you just read it luke never mentions i don't like seeing kids in my cabin never get claimed i don't like seeing hermes kids go so long without being claimed he says i didn't get to kill a dragon killing a dragon wasn't as cool as i thought it was that's why the what that's why i decided to turn against the gods that's why i want the world to end he didn't mention any of the other kids at camp yeah he doesn't give a fuck <laughs> about the other kids at camp and so it's like, if that is the only way you can find some way to like make them be similar, maybe they're not that similar and you should maybe stop now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, so we talked about this while we were reading Sea of Monsters, but Percy is supposed to be antithetical to how everybody else treats monsters. And he is almost like bridging the gap for everybody else because he brings Annabeth to a place of understanding. And, you know, all of the other people eventually, like Tyson is accepted as this, you know, good Cyclops. But um, 
Luke, he's literally only using the monsters for his mission. He never respects them. And, um, like, if the message of Percy Jackson is supposed to be, like, all of us partially divine people deserve recognition and love and support, then Percy's the one who actually literally does it all of the time. And Luke is the one that does it very conditionally and uses people exactly how he is mad at the Olympians for using half-bloods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does the same thing. Like, the kids at camp in the second book being so mean to Tyson because they think that they're better than him is the best example of what Luke is like because he was the leader at camp. And yeah. all those kids in that book particularly still look up to him and keep comparing Percy to him and things like that. And mm-hmm. so... They obviously do things because they think that's what he would do or just beliefs that he has. And so, like, I can't remember a certain time, but I do know that in the, like, later on books where Percy is the one, like, the leader at camp and things like that, it's not the same, like, atmosphere and that way at all. Because Percy, are you kidding me? Like the book that we just read, Bessie is the best friend to Percy in Titan's Curse. She is an overly anxious little sea like cow and literally just follows him around trying to help him everywhere he goes. Like nobody else actually pays attention to him in the same way in that book. She's honestly the best friend he has in that entire book. And, but like he like yells at the gods when they're already talking about killing him to try to stop them from killing like just an innocent creature like that like somebody like that who is the most powerful kid at camp that just like has an effect on people in the long term where that same sort of just attitude isn't there in later books it's just not because people don't they wouldn't want to make percy upset like even if they themselves still like hold on to that idea that they're better than certain creatures or whatever they don't want to make Percy sad or they don't want to make him angry one one or the other. And so they're not going to do those sort of things. And that does have a much more positive influence on the kids at camp going forward. Like you can even say that like a lot of the characters being openly like queer or trans or both is one of those things too, that he, him being like that creates an environment where you're allowed to like be yourself and yeah. be different. And like Luke would never want anyone to actually be different because he would use that as a way to make himself feel like he's superior because yes. that's that's the kind of thing that people like him do and he does that anyway in, in these books like we talked about how in sea of monsters there's a bunch of just innocent human beings on his ship that are likely just being killed whenever the monsters on his ship are hungry mm-hmm. because why else are they there yeah <laughs> there he has a sword that can kill those people he obviously doesn't want them there and so that's the only reason why they would be there. And he, and even in Titan's Curse, the way that he talks about mortals, he says like, oh, I never trust a mortal doing a job for me that I never do it right. And it's like, he very clearly feels like he is above them somehow, that yeah. he's better than them. And it's like, that's not the attitude of somebody who is doing all of this to like help everybody else. Like, I guess, I guess the thing with Luke is i feel like people have this like weird like overly i don't know like romanticized abusive idea that like oh this person is just doing the right thing by doing all these bad things and causing this chaos and they just like have to do this because no one else will and they know the whole time they're doing it that they're somehow going to save everybody and it's like that person doesn't actually exist though yeah that doesn't actually like happen. Um, it's one of the things I hate the most about abusive people, I guess, is I feel like I feel like too many people just like believe what abusive people say. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why do you believe them? There's nothing about them that like makes you feel like they're trustworthy. Like in this story, you have the only way that you can believe that Luke actually regrets like joining Kronos and wants to change his mind is you have to believe when he's telling Thalia that stuff and when he's talking to Annabeth and stuff that he's actually like telling the truth Mm -hmm. you have to believe then that when he tried to kidnap Annabeth that he was 
wanting to do that to just like run away and actually try to stop everything that was happening. And then also you have to believe that when he tells Percy at the very end, like, don't forget about people like me and Ethan right before he dies, you have to believe that he's saying that honestly. And there honestly is no reason for you to think in this story that he's being honest because all of his actions contradict those statements. Like that's, I guess that's like the whole point of this book series is I feel like, like, I know you were saying this before that like Annabeth has a reason to be struggling with believing, like wanting to believe that Luke could be saved because she has like an emotional attachment to him when she was at a very like vulnerable age and he is actively grooming her. And so she has a re even as hard as it is to read her being like that with Luke and like disregarding Percy and stuff to try to believe that she could save him. You can understand when you're reading the book, why she feels that way, but you as the audience don't have that happening. Like you aren't being groomed by Luke. You have not, Luke did not save your life when you were seven years old where you feel where you can't, where you don't want to let go of these like positive memories you think are positive memories in your life. And so why are you believing him the way that she is? Because you shouldn't be like you actually, there's nothing in these books that make you think that Rick Riordan wants you to like, you should not be on Annabeth's side in Titan's curse when she wants to go off and save Luke and is like falling right into his trap, like wants to bring him to Olympus when he could kill all the gods in one place. You yeah. should not be like on her side in Battle of the Labyrinth when she's being absolutely rancid to Percy about this stuff. You should be on Percy's side. You should be on his side because you can see that he literally ran all away from camp with nothing and spent the whole book trying to help her. And then when he gets there, all she can talk about is wanting to save the guy that's killed, try to kill him multiple times. Mm -hmm. Like you should be on his side. And it, it makes me feel like a lot of complicated things that most of the time with like scapegoats, we don't tell people how we feel like, because we've just kind of learned that most of the time people either don't care or they like try to like gaslight us or tell us not to feel those things because the things that we feel are like bring up things that they don't want to think about they're upset yeah. they don't want to think about that and so we just learn not to say that stuff out loud that's part of the difficult stuff of being one in that role is that you're going through a lot a lot of the time but nobody knows like so the time when I was going through the most all the time at school, no one had any idea. Even my best friends had absolutely no idea what was actually going on because I just like hid all of it. Um, you're just used to doing that. But like this book series, you are literally in his head. Yeah. You're like reading all these thoughts that he has. You're like reading him saying in like just in Titan's Curse alone, the very beginning of the book, he's talking about how he's so depressed that he doesn't eat. And he, and that's like the thing that makes Chiron realize that something is wrong with him because he doesn't show up to dinner and he gets Grover to come with him to talk to him to make sure that he's okay. And he's obviously not okay. And that entire book, all these other things keep happening. And besides Chiron in the beginning of the book, nobody ever like checks in on him to make sure that he's okay. And he's emphatically not okay in any way, shape or form at all. The book ends with him like, almost wanting Nico to come back and attack him because he thinks that he deserves it. And like, just thinking if I just act as bait for Luke, then even if I'm destroyed, who cares? Because everyone else will be fine because I obviously don't matter. And it's like, if you're reading this book where you see this happening to him, where you're literally reading him saying, I don't know if I'm going to be alive in a week. So I don't care that I don't have any food. And, and like spends an entire book trying to save Annabeth. And then when he sees her, he's like, oh, it's not a big deal that I tried to save your life like this. And never even tells her that he just like ran out of camp with nothing. Yeah. Like she doesn't even find out about that for like many, many books after that. She doesn't even find out that that even happened <laughs> until like somewhere in Heroes of Olympus. And it's like, if you can read him going through all of this stuff and literally be like inside his head and you still are taking Luke's side, 
it's like I give up. Yeah. <laughs> you're like literally reading how damaging this is to him. And you're still like, but I want to defend Luke. And I want to like defend what he was doing, even though he's doing all these horrible things to Percy. And it's like, I just, those moments are the ones where I'm like, what if I just like never talk on the internet ever again? Because if people are like reading what he's going through in this way and they still just don't prioritize his experience and like his feelings, because we go through like a a lot, (laughs) we just like don't talk about it that much. And so it's like if if even reading it doesn't make you realize how much Luke is putting him through and that nothing that he's that Luke has gone through before this makes that okay. Like he's also putting Annabeth through that. He's putting Grover through that. He's putting Thalia through that. He's putting every person he's ever met through this. But like you're in Percy's head and he's a very empathetic person. So he makes you care about everyone else around him even more than you already would. And so like if you if that doesn't make you not want to turn against like Luke or realize that he's a bad person and there's nothing there to like save, then I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what will. Yeah. Um, Like I was telling you about this the other day and I can't find it, but um, Becky Riordan has her um, account, her Mythal Magic account on Twitter and Threads. I hate Twitter, so I only look at her account on Threads. And um, she, many months ago, before I even knew that account was her, because I didn't know that account was even her until like July <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. Um, but she was talking about how when the books were first coming out, that a lot of kids for like Halloween and stuff, when they would come or when they would just come to like, all of the author signings that Rick used to do back then, um, they would come dressed as Luke over being dressed as Percy. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about it because she was like, I don't understand. She's like, I I didn't understand when that was happening back then. And I don't understand now why people would want to be like him instead of, instead of like, and like, When I saw her say that at the time, I like stopped myself from responding and being like, because people like your abuser more than the victim. Oof. That's that's why they like, they think that the uh, your abuser is more interesting than you. And so they, that's why they're dressing up like him. But it, I really liked that she, especially after I learned that that was her, because I didn't even know that was her when I saw her say that, for her to point that out of like, why do you like him more? Because you shouldn't. Um. Especially when you consider that, like, like Rick and and her, the people in the books are very obviously based on people they actually knew, and so mm-hmm. Luke is probably based on someone they actually knew. Oh yeah, that treated people like that because, like, you know, when you look at like Rick's relationship with his mom, she was an author. Like Sally is an author. He was much closer to his mother and didn't really know his dad. That's also Percy, and so. A lot of these people are probably people that he, they knew and people that they experienced things they experienced and so it must be very very weird to see a bunch of people on the internet be like so invested in your story and you're glad that they are but then they like become very invested in defending the character that is probably somebody that you knew in real life that didn't treat you well and it must be just so strange to see that and i'm like glad that she said that like and just like said it at all to like make people think about it um just because why are you doing that (laughs) yeah like why don't you want to like dress up like like percy why are you dressing up like the person that's terrorizing everybody and i guess i get like very like defensive of this because i know that there's kids that have gone through abuse that are actively reading these books right now Mm -hmm. or that are like going through abuse right now and they are reading these books as a way to be like understood um, because I was a kid like that. I wasn't reading Percy Jackson because they weren't out yet. Yeah. Um, but I was, but even when I read Percy Jackson when I was 25, my dad was still alive then. And reading a book like this where every person that reminded me of him was a horrible villain and one of them got turned into stone at the end of the book, <laughs> um, of the first book, it was really, really validating to read a book series where the people that reminded me of him were all bad people. And 
so even beyond that, like, but this is a children's series. And so I know for a fact, because some of them message me <laughs> that there are kids that are going through maybe not so nice times mm -hmm. at home and they read this book series to feel like understood or they just love Percy because they see themselves in Percy like I do and things like that. And it makes me really upset to think about people, kids like that, seeing people try to make excuses for Luke to the point I even saw somebody say that he's not a pedophile or like in, and it's like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, like, that's like the one thing that you can never like really fully argue against. Um, but it's just like, I don't think that kids going, maybe this is not fair because not everybody who reads these books is, but I don't care. Enough people that I've seen, even as like adults, have mm -hmm. that going on in their life that love these books and have like never moved past them because of how important they are to them because of how they treat things like this. And so it's like, I just wish people would remember that there are a lot of kids or adults that read these books because they were abused by somebody like Luke. And when you make posts defending Luke, they read that too. And they see that. And those are the things I used to see before I went to therapy that would, where I would tell myself, like, I'm just being dramatic mm -hmm. about, about my dad. He wasn't actually that bad. I was actually the problem. If I wasn't the way that I was, he wouldn't have done any of these things to me. And it was actually my fault because obviously these people are saying this thing about this character that's like him. So obviously they're right and I'm wrong. And because it's very easy to just fall back into that because you don't want to believe that about somebody in your life that you love. And I know that there's kids reading those posts because I was that person at one point. Yeah. <laughs> and like to be like completely transparent because I mentioned things with my dad, but I never fully say anything like my dad physically, emotionally, verbally and sexually abused me, sexually abused me for 12 years from the time that I was six until I was 18 and he couldn't do it anymore because I left the house and went to college. If I still lived at home, he would have kept doing it. And so like, I just want you to understand when I say that I would see those posts and be like, oh, my dad wasn't that bad. That's what I was saying wasn't that bad. And yeah. so I know that there are kids going through that exact same situation who read these books um, because like they find my videos. <laughs> and I also like end up reading fan fiction written by some of them sometimes too. Um, and so it's like we find these things because they mean a lot to us and it like that's why I feel like us doing episodes like this are worth it, even if people get very angry at us sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like, there are kids like that out there that will see what you say and it will harm them. And maybe nobody else will say anything, but I will. Like, I don't care. You can hate me like all you want and you can tell me that I'm wrong and that I'm bad. And I'll just turn off comments on my video and then tell Mandy about it. And then she'll get angry and protective and want to go yell at people. <laughs> and, then, and then we'll do another one of these episodes where we'll yell about all the things people said to me that made me cry and stuff like that. That's just like the cycle we get into. But it's still worth it to like put it out there because it's like, I don't want those, I want those kids to find this thing because it is one of the very rare things that are made like where everyone involved in it like cares a lot about what they're making and they treat the abuse stuff in the story like the way that it should mm -hmm. like they treat it with like care and they're serious about how they show it as opposed to like you know um jk rowling and most other things harry potter is just like the best known one um but like there's a lot of other things like that that kind of show abuse but don't really fully go there or or like try to give like a redemption story <laughs> or whatever like i don't see luke as a redemption story at all because he just kills himself yeah that's mm -hmm. like such an easy way out i mean mm -hmm. speaking as a golden child who's reforming it's it's hard work it really is hard work to admit i've done terrible things in the name of this family system in the name of the dysfunction and like, I, I know what I do to counteract it, but it's hard. It's really hard work to be like, wow, I was such a little shit to my brother. I actively tortured him. 
all of the time. I was part of the system that made him feel like shit. And so who he is as an adult, I feel partially responsible for now. And there is this like, I really don't want to hurt people thing. I mean, um, like I put on friends only a video about how somebody in my life got hurt over things that I said that weren't even about them. And I have, I have like a self identity crisis because it's like, well, shit, that's not who I'm trying to be anymore. Like, what do I do to fix this? How do I make sure this never ever happens again? Um, like that's what you do when you're actually going for redemption. If I were to just like give up what, you know, like what happens, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Luke is not Zuko. He's not. Luke is Kylo Ren. Mm -hmm. Like Kylo Ren was not redeem like redeemed either. He realized he actually did a lot more than Luke because he fully realized because his mom died. Um, <laughs> that what he was doing was wrong and helped and helped helped ray by falling into a hole which is still thank you jj abrams for making kylo ren fall into a hole during the most dramatic part of the last movie <laughs> he literally just falls into a hole and climbs out of the hole after everything is over and then dies <laughs> <laughs> that still makes me laugh thinking about it because he literally was like i just wanted you here to like save her life but now that that's done just like leave um but that's more who luke is where kylo did more than luke like i said like he realized more and like turned things around luke literally was that guy that was like oh i guess i'm gonna lose now <laughs> like he i don't think he ever thought that percy and the other kids from camp were ever gonna beat him that he was pretty convinced that him and Kronos were going to win. And then when it became extremely abundantly obvious that they weren't going to win, that they had already lost, that Percy and them had won, he was like, well, I guess I can just kill myself now. And like, that is always the route that a horrible abuse of people should do. Absolutely kill yourself. Just do that because that is the best thing. You don't need to be alive anymore. Your existence just hurts everybody around you. So just take yourself out instead of hurting everybody else around you. That's what you should do. That's like the best decision he ever made. And at the same time, it also fucked with um, Percy and Annabeth still past that point. Because like people are running around saying that Luke was a hero. Even in this world, people are trying to say that he was a hero because he killed himself at the end. And because he killed himself, Kronos like died inside of him. And so it's like almost like the ultimate like last kind of like manipulation thing to do to them that because he killed himself they're like sitting there having to argue about whether you know he actually did something good or not when they should be able to just be like this guy was a horrible monster and i'm glad that he's gone they're instead stuck in this situation for even longer yeah and like i am glad that he did it because if he didn't do it Percy was going to have to do it, and my god, no. <laughs> but he was, he thought he was going to have to do it. And so I was glad that Luke did it to himself first. But it, even in like the best like decision that he made in the last five years of his life, it still hurt his victims more after he was gone. Especially when Hermes was like verbatim telling, like saying to Percy, like, Luke was a hero. He deserves to go to Elysium and and you can't be mad at him because he's a hero and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like an exaggeration. He literally sits there and says that to Percy when he like when his when he's dead. When they're like doing whatever with his body and Percy is just standing there like thinking about his life, like what am I what has happened? <laughs> and so that's like the one thing he did, but it's still put Percy in this position where anyone who wanted to boo it's like reflected in like the people who try to defend Luke that the one nice thing that he did they act like that thing is so nice that it like supersedes everything else that he's ever done that isn't nice and it never works the other way like it's like that weird thing that like your victim will do like one thing that maybe isn't that nice like Percy being like I can see why Luke got mad at the gods and they take that as like a reason of like oh you're actually secretly bad but when it's like the villain that does one nice thing it's like well then they're all secretly good and all the bad things they did are like erased but that doesn't but like their victim doesn't get the same sort of 
respect as okay. that. And it's like interesting how that works. <laughs> Yeah, so we had talked about this offline and it's it's hard to find a way to fit it in, but we often compare Luke and um and Percy to like scapegoat and golden child dynamics and scapegoats like your guys' under achievements are always undermined because they seem lesser because you have so many circumstances you're fighting against. You're fighting against your family dynamics, you're fighting against your own brain and how it's reacted to the abuse you're fighting against your body's reactions to the abuse. So like literally getting out of bed is an achievement, you know? Mm -hmm. And and for us, it's like, oh, you breathe the right way. Good job, golden child. Like, um, <laughs> no, no. And so like right now, when I'm in this season of my life where I'm unemployed, I rub it in my dad's face every time he's like, oh yeah, your brother, like, I eh, could be doing better. I'm like, he's employed. He's doing really great. He has friends. I sit at home and I crochet. Um, <laughs> and I talk to the internet. Like, <laughs> what do you, you think is happening here, dad? That even reminds me of like this, like the, us doing this podcast. Like I was just telling you, I was like laughing before we did this, that um, we started doing this when I didn't have a job. And so I did, had like no money. And I still don't. <laughs> and um, but like when we read Sea of Monsters, I didn't have the book. And so I was reading it off of a PDF I found from some English library that just like posted the entire PDF of the entire book for free because I didn't have any money to like go out and buy the book. Like I bought I didn't actually buy it. My mom bought me the third, fourth and fifth book when we went to Half Price Books one time. And she was like, I'll buy you whatever you want. And I was like, okay, I want these <laughs> because we're going to have to read these at some point. And I want to actually be able to look at the book instead of reading this stupid PDF on <laughs> online. <laughs> but it's like, even with us doing that, I had like 17 different crises when we were doing this of like, but people are going to see me. And like, what if like my, what if my sister sees this and she gets mad at me? What if my sister watches this at all ever when <laughs> my life will end <laughs> and like and things like that um i don't want her to ever see any of this stuff because i actually like this and don't want her to tell me what she thinks about it at all even if she says something nice i'll be like in I'm like i'm in danger <laughs> and but it's like normal stuff like oh i just want to do a podcast with my best friend and put it on the internet it's so easy for other people because they have some sort of like support system. I have like somewhat of a support system now, but it's like a very new thing. Mm -hmm. And so I have like men, many mental crises before asking for help in any way, shape or form. <laughs> and like, whatever I do, my mom is like, yeah, I'll help you. And like, it's like nothing because that's just how she is now. But it takes me forever to get myself to even get to that point when most people, they would just be like, hey, do you want to do this? Like, I, I laugh about it, but when I had the idea of us doing this, it took me three weeks to actually ask you. And I was sure that when I asked you, you would tell me no. And I was sure even when we started doing it, that at one point you wouldn't want to do it anymore. Because I was like, why would anybody want to do this with me? <laughs> and I was like, I don't think she's going to change her mind. I think she actually really likes doing this with me. <laughs> but it literally took me like six months to figure that out. Because that's just how like your brain works when everyone around you is telling you how horrible you are. And I don't yeah. say this as like a way to like make me sound sad and pathetic or whatever, but it's just that's how this stuff is. And so I know like when I read these stories and see these characters going through these really difficult things, I know how difficult this stuff actually is. Mm -hmm. And it's very nice to read a character like Percy, who is like suicidal off and on. Yeah. from honestly the first book and doesn't want to be around anymore and doesn't think that he matters and very much like reflects that sort of process and it's really nice to see him be like the hero of the story and that he's the one that everybody loves and he doesn't understand why they do at all <laughs> most of the time he's like i don't whatever but you say you love me so like let's date now annabeth is pretty much how that happens because he's just like oh i okay <laughs> like now that now that you're not like gonna do whatever you're gonna do with luke let's like i i guess we can get together now um but it's that sort of a thing and it's very nice to see a character like him exist out there that shows the realities of how you feel when you feel like that um yeah. 
and it's just hard when I see people choosing to like love his abuser over him and I'm like but why like we yeah. find we finally get a character like him that shows how hard this stuff is and then you're like but what about the guy that made him feel like that <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, like I said in the beginning, we're meant to find Luke tragic. We really are. We're meant to, you know, think all of these terrible things happened to him and look what he became. But we're also meant to think about that in a way that questions like, don't let that bitterness take over. You know, like when you have a failure, don't let that bitterness take over. I'll tell you one of my golden child tantrums, which was when I got fired. I was like, you know, the way I got fired doesn't make sense. I know enough about this place that I could tear it down. I could. <laughs> I was thinking that. I was like, I, in one call to the health department, I could say this. Or I could say this. And um, I didn't, you know? Because, like, the thing that held me back was... Um, so I was working at a naturopathic office for the context of, like, I could, I could tear it all down by calling the health department here about this thing or this thing. Because... Every medical office has things that they do that are cutting corners, mm -hmm. every single one. Um, but I was like, I saw people go in and out of that office and have successes and like really love the person that they were working with or really love, you know, like the results that they were getting. And if I did that, that would affect all of the patients. Mm -hmm. And my entire time as the office manager there, that is all I cared about was those patients. I spent day and night worrying about the patients. So for me to just like 180 and like, I wanna fuck over my ex boss so bad that I don't care about my old coworkers. I don't care about my, my ex patients. Like I wasn't gonna do that. But like it, the thought did cross my mind, you know? I think everyone has those thoughts sometimes. Like I sent you a picture today of of my most abusive boss by far running mm -hmm. for like local government. And I know he's going to win because nobody else is running against him and that he won four years ago. This dude does not deserve to have like any sort of government position at all. He's a horrible human being. Mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah, part of me is like, I wish that I could like call them or like call like some news place and tell them what he was like to try to get him out of his job, but that would just put more pressure on the people that work for him right now that are going through the same sort of thing that I went through. And there's no guarantee that anyone would actually, you know, care. <laughs> and so I don't want to, I don't want to put them under more pressure than they already are under working with somebody like that. If like the public would be talking about him in a negative way, that's who he would take it out on. And like to like kind of go back to the original thing we were talking we wanted to talk about with which is like if was luke like groomed by chronos too and it's like maybe like maybe he was he was in some way like manipulated by him obviously um he wouldn't have had him do the specific tasks that he was doing if if like chronos wasn't kind of giving them the the idea per se but there's also a thing of like that also doesn't really matter and it doesn't like negate what he did because he was actively choosing to do those things. That's yeah. like always the thing about it. Like when you're stealing these things and you know that some unknown child is out there, you don't even know who they are. And they're the one that is going to get attacked because of you doing that. And then you befriend that child when they're super traumatized and they show up to camp and you try to get them to like you so that you can give them a pair of shoes that is meant to drag them into hell so they die like 10 feet away from their mother when they've been trying just to see their mother again and you're the reason why their mother was killed in the first place. Like when you make just that decision alone and that's like one of the first decisions he makes, you're done. And like, that's the whole thing with Percy is he's right about Luke the entire time. He's never coming back. He's made too many decisions. And so, yeah, maybe Kronos was like manipulating him at first, or maybe Kronos was like pushing him, but he was pushing these like feelings that he already had and just making them bigger. Like sometimes there can be like bad influences in your life that kind of bring out the like toxic side of you. 
instead of good people that try to like work with that side so that you you know don't do that to people like Kronos was literally like gasoline on the flame that was already there okay. and at a certain point it just doesn't matter it it doesn't matter because he's doing these things and it's a very like victim blaming like sort of thing to be like oh but people forget that Luke was abused too and it's like they forget because it does not matter when you are the one doing these things like you are the one that is poisoning Thalia's tree you are the one that is telling Percy I want to watch you watch your best friends get killed before I kill you you are the one that's trying to kill everyone at camp you're the one terrorizing everybody and so like why it doesn't matter now how you have been harmed in the same way that like my dad had an abusive dad. Does that make what he did to me? Okay. Like, obviously not. Mm-hmm. And but, like, that's the thing that people would say to me growing up is like, Oh, his dad was terrible to him and blah, blah, blah. And like, he was, I obviously, I know that he was, but it doesn't excuse anything that he did to me. And if the only time that you're bringing that up to me is to try to make me stop talking about the things that he's done to me to hurt me, then you don't actually care about that. That's like part of the whole thing is like, if people actually cared about Luke, where they were like worried about him being like groomed by this other powerful being, then you would bring up the years where he was at camp for three fucking years and was like being nice to all those kids for three years while he was like secretly plotting to kill them all. You would think about that time in his life and how somebody could have stepped in to stop him. But there isn't that focus in the books ever because it's very obvious that he doesn't actually, he's not actually like this lost person. He's not actually like a good person that just got like lost along the way and like wanted to help people, but just got influenced by a bad person. He was already that angry to begin with yeah and so it like does not it doesn't matter it legitimately doesn't matter that chronos like ruined him at a certain point because it's like once you're trying to convince other people that you're friends with to give up your entire life once you're trying to get a 12 year old kid like trapped in hell where he has no choice but to let chronos like inhabit his body and kill everyone that he just met and have and like sometimes I think about like a what if scenario of like what if Percy actually was like dragged down into Tartarus? The only people that would believe that he wasn't evil from the start was would be like Grover and Annabeth, and they probably would have had to go on the run mm-hmm. because nobody else at camp would have believed them. They would have believed Luke, and they would be the only people that would ever believe that he wasn't actually bad the entire time. And so it's like that's what that that's what he wanted to happen. And so like just that one decision, it's like you've already gone too far where saying that somebody like manipulated you into doing that, like you could have stopped though. Mm -hmm. I guess like that's the thing I try to say about abusive people that a lot of times the way that people talk about them is if like they had a bad childhood, so they had no choice but to like do these things. And it's like, no, you definitely have choices. Like, I can say, my childhood is one of the worst ones you can possibly ever have. And never at any point was I like, I should murder somebody today. And besides my dad, <laughs> but, yeah. I never, but I never actually did it, obviously. I could never actually ever do something like that. And he was the only one that I would ever, like, imagine doing that to. And I never even, I would, I never even got close to doing something like that to him. And so, like... It's, it's not like that. That's just not how this stuff works. You don't go through a lot of trauma in your life and just wake up one day wanting to kill everybody. Yeah. Like you have to actually like go through with those decisions. You have to actually look people in the eye, knowing that you're going to hurt them and not care. And most people can't do that. And it's not just pure manipulation that makes somebody do something like that. It has, there has to be something else going on in you where you could ignore the empathy that you have in order to even do something like that because like you'll hear stories about people in like cults and things like that but not everybody who's in a cult like that ends up like killing somebody for the cause or things like that even like (laughs) even like the 
political version of that, like Trump and his supporters. Um, like a bunch of them went to like January 6th, obviously, but most of the people who went didn't actually do anything violent. There were some people there who were violent and like hurt and like maimed and killed like a couple police officers afterwards and things like that. But most of them went there and just like took pictures in the Capitol and left. And so even people like them, like the majority of the people that were in that situation were not were people that just thought that it was fun to be mm -hmm. there. They weren't there because they had like violent like tendencies. Like most people who are in those even environments like that that are meant to like kind of make you stop thinking, most of the people who are, are in those things don't want to kill anybody and don't want to hurt people. It's only like a couple people usually in organizations like that, even in like the worst ones that are actually willing to do things like that. Um, and so it's like, it's not actually, I get very defensive about it because I'm like, do you think that I'm just going to like kill people one day? <laughs> um, or that I should have? <laughs> yeah. Because I don't want to. And I, I never have because if I wanted to, I probably would have figured out a way to do it. But it's also just a thing of like most victims don't do that at all. It's rare that we do. Um, and like I said, with the whole school shooting thing, if you're not okay with school shooters taking out whatever they're going through on their classmates, I don't know why you're okay with Luke taking it out on the people at this camp. <laughs> yeah. Like he can say as much as he wants. I mean, it's in the villain monologue we just read in Titan's Curse where he says, take, take out Olympus's tools and then they have nothing to fight with. But those are your friends. <laughs> like, those are literally people. They're not physical tools. Yeah, they're like humans. And the thing with Luke always is like, these are people that he actually knows. Like, they're not like nameless, faceless soldiers or anything like that. Like when Percy goes and fights his monsters, he doesn't know those monsters he didn't like grow up with them they're not his friends he's never met them before but mm -hmm. that's who luke is fighting people who he's known for years of his life that he like taught how to fight and like taught them how to live at camp and made them feel like they could fit in at camp and they had no idea that for three years he was plotting how to kill them all and so it's it's like a new level of just like depravity with him that he is so like separated from other people's like having feelings and just what he's doing to other people that he's he has to know what he's doing to them but he just doesn't care he just doesn't care enough to stop because he just wants what he wants and so he wants the entire world to burn because he didn't beat a dragon when he was 16. and so the entire world has to be corrupt in order for him to lose and so he wants the entire world to end so that it can rebuild with him at the top. And he doesn't care about who he hurts along the way as long as he gets that power. Anyone being taken out is just somebody in the way. That's not somebody who like regrets what he did or thinks that he did the wrong thing or even like has an altruistic bone in his entire body. He just wants to do what he wants to do, and that's and that's it. Just like get out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And to kind of lead us into what's going to be the next book in this discussion, I really think that the like pseudo romance with um, Annabeth, and especially where he's going with it, where he finally does start to express some sort of feelings for her eventually. I. I see that more as a desperate clinging to the humanity he has left while Kronos is taking over him more than anything. Um, because like she really is the only thing close to family that he like even considers family. I know his mom's still alive. I know his dad's out there somewhere, but she's really the only one that's family. And so it's, it's hard to even find sympathy in that for me because it's just it's clawing his way out of this situation that he's created for himself and also like abusive people they do love like i don't like it when people say that they don't love at all because they do they're human beings they're not like monsters or whatever they do have feelings mm -hmm. but their version of love is very different 
from what most people like how we would love or most people would love where like i do think that luke cares generally cares for annabeth and generally cares for like thalia and things like that but when it for annabeth he likes that she idolizes him mm-hmm. and so for, like abusive people like that they want people around them that make them feel like special that make them feel like love like make them feel like they're better than other people because that's how they want to feel and so that for them that's what love is is being around people that like make them feel like that because that's what they think makes them happy and so i do think that luke in a way like loves annabeth but it's obviously in a not a great way for annabeth because he likes the fact that annabeth just idolizes him so much and thinks that he's this amazing hero and stuff like that when nobody else really thinks like that about him anymore, especially after he talks to Thalia. Thalia doesn't even feel like that about him anymore. And so she's really the only one left. And so he likes that feeling of feeling like somebody still like looks up to him like that and thinks that he's amazing and special and fantastic in the way that he feels at least like people look at Percy more. Yeah. Even though Percy's like, what do you mean? I hate myself. And so he doesn't, he doesn't see it that way at all. But I think that's the closest that Luke can get for like what people would consider his love is like that with Annabeth. But it's also obviously very like distorted because he likes, he likes the side of her personality that is her fatal flaw. Like that's what he, he likes the like destructive part of of her. And that's the part of her that, that's the only part of her that he likes. Like he doesn't like the other all the other parts of her that would tell her not to do this stuff with with him Mm -hmm. um and so i do think he cares about her and feels like this connection to her because he likes remembering how much little annabeth like looked up to him and i do think that him pulling the like did you ever really love me line in the last book is him wanting to feel like he even after everything still had like something over percy like that, you know, despite everything else, like Annabeth always loved me and cared about me more than everybody else. And so when she's like, no, dude, and and like, and says, she literally says like, no, she's like, I thought for a second, maybe, but no. And she like looks right at Percy when she's saying it. It's very obvious to tell what's going on there. Um, but I think that's why he said it was because he wanted that like last, Thing that he could like hang on to before he died of like well at least annabeth always loved me the best and then she's like actually i don't <laughs> i like realized actually you were really bad for me and and like figured out that this was actually a really bad idea on my own thanks <laughs> um but i think that's what he was doing there and i don't mean to say that as like to lessen what he does but it's just that's like the closest he can get i think to like something resembling like real love. And of course it's also very toxic. Of course. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of chaos in Annabeth's life that she feels like that about him. But I think that's where that stuff comes from. And I, I think that's why he like never really goes back to like see his mom because his mom doesn't make him feel like special or magical or like a, a superhero or anything like that. She see, he sees her as like, like something that needs to be hidden because it's almost like he's ashamed of her in some way um but so like he never even goes to like see her for many years after that she did he just leaves and never comes back like thalia and annabeth go back but but he never does um and i think that's why he just like leaves her because he's like well i can't get anything from her anymore because she's just like mentally ill so why bother going to see her again because she won't help me and it's like because most people just want to see people they love not because they get something out of them but because they just care about them as a person yeah um but he never gets there (laughs) yeah um i feel like that took us through titan's curse and um we can continue to have these discussions as we go through the books and there's more like there's more of his villain monologues. There's more um, of the the bullshit he tries to pull, especially now that he's desperate. Because I would that's how I would characterize him at the end of the book is desperation 
Um, because yeah, he has to live with the choice he made and that's not fun. <laughs> it's no longer fun for him. Yeah, and I will say that abusive people like him are genuinely surprised that people don't agree with him. <laughs> and so I'm sure that he's like, what do you mean that Thalia doesn't want to kill Percy for me? Like, I honestly think that he was very shocked by that. Mm -hmm. Instead of most people being like, yeah, that obviously makes sense. Why would she be okay with murder? Okay. Um, but I think he was generally surprised by that. So he's definitely like reeling for a bit in the next book, which makes him do really bad stuff. <laughs> Okay. Um, but it will be interesting, especially if, like, whatever comes out at the D23 in Brazil, if there's anything with him that will make everyone start talking again. Mm -hmm. And we'll see, like, what they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the one thing that we predicted that we found out is actually going to happen is that they're going to have these flashback scenes to the kids pre-camp to Annabeth pre-camp and um I know that in the book series that's all in like a side book it's not even in the normal book series right it's like the demigod diaries or something like that um which I haven't read I don't know if you've read that one uh -uh. yeah so but at the same time I I don't feel like knowing that backstory more intimately is supposed to make us any more sympathetic to his cause and how he's going about it and yeah again like our overall conclusion is that like though he may have been manipulated by Kronos he still does very very unforgivable things he's past a point of no return at this point and like it's it sucks it's tragic it shouldn't have ever happened but it's what's happening in the books and so like radical acceptance your way into that yeah it's like a weird thing of People use the line that he says in the Demigod Files about like, oh, that that like Annabeth says to him when he's about to to get him to kill himself. <laughs> um, the whole like, Luke, you promised that that we would always be family thing. Mm -hmm. um, and like, people bring that up as a thing to say like, oh, look at he wanted to protect her. And it's like, yeah, but he made a lot of choices a couple years after this that completely negated everything he said here but it's also like a thing of just acknowledging that that like Annabeth is in this position in the last book where she's having to like manipulate him basically into killing himself because she knows that he's he will listen to her and won't listen to anyone else and I know what it's like when a really abusive person only listens to you and nobody else and it's horrible to know that you can control them like that and you have that sort of weird power like Annabeth of us should never have to go through that mm -hmm. knowing that this horrible monster like still loves her and that she can somehow manipulate him into doing things she shouldn't ever be in that sort of position where she's having to bring that stuff up to luke to get him to do the right thing and kill himself finally at the end of everything yeah. he's having to do it because he puts her in that position and it's really wrong that he puts her in that position in the first place. It's not something that people should like celebrate that he feels that way about her. She deserves so much better than be put through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so to kind of wrap this up, as you said, D23 Brazil is coming up. We're expecting something, whether it be another teaser trailer, a cast announcement, Something like that is probably going to happen at this one, um, which we will talk about um, probably next week. Mm -hmm. And then um, we've talked about finding different fan fictions. So for any of our watchers that have favorites that um, bring us up to this point, you know, up to Titan's Curse, maybe even um, right up to the start of Battle of the Labyrinth, that would be really good. Um, we're going to try to keep it you know, within what we've read so far, but we're okay, like, you know, with characters that have already been introduced, that's kind of a gray area for us, like Mr. Mm -hmm. Blowers. <laughs> yeah, it, that's a, so next week we'll read, we'll be talking about fan fiction with, about Paul and Percy, since Paul is introduced at the end of this book, 
And there's some really great stories about that whole dynamic. And so if there's anything that you can think of, of like themes in Titan's Curse um, with like Nico or Annabeth or anything like that, that you would want us to read and talk about that isn't, even if it's past the point where we are, if they're not, some stories just don't mention some of the stuff that gives away things in the future. So yeah. as long as it's not specific, then we can read and think about like the themes more of what we just read before trying to deal with reading the next book. <laughs> I just need a break before yeah. going into the next book because I know that it's going to be really hard. It's a really great book, but it's going to be really hard to read if things get even more complicated. Yeah, we're unfortunately at the part of the series where it's all dark. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, so we're going to wrap it up here because I got to put William to bed. I heard he just took his nighttime shower, so I got to get him to bed. Um, and yeah, we'll talk to you guys next week about D23 and fanfic. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye.